Hello everyone, today we're going to um, talk about a really exciting uh, new feature, it's rather new, um, which is called self-serve returns. Um, and all the rules, the additional rules that you can actually add to make sure that um, you allow customers to return or to request a return um, from the account structure itself natively um, within Shopify. So. Uh, maybe I'm going to go through um, how it looks first. So basically what you can see here is uh, I'm logged in as a customer. Um, I have um, a um, order that I had created on this, uh, on this customer. So this is an order that has been shipped to me um, basically, right? So you can see all of the uh, products that are in the order. Um, I returned one item already. Um, yeah, you can um, see here the overview, basically, you can see your order information. Um, and what you can also do is uh, yeah, buy again and request a return. So this is exa exactly what I'm showing. So as a customer, you see all of your orders that you have placed and you have um, standardly, if you allow it, um, a request return button on certain orders. Um, and if you click on this, um, what you actually can see is that you can just uh, generate a reason why you want to return um, and then request a return uh, potentially. But super interesting, what you can see here is that this order actually contains three snowboards. I can still return one snowboard. One has been returned already, which you can see here. And then you can also see that one product has the final sale badge, which means that you can actually also make sure that certain items cannot be returned. So this is something that we get as a request a lot with customers that say, okay, maybe if it's a bundle or if it's in a sale period that this product has been um, sold, then we don't want people to be able to return it. So I'm going to walk you through all of the settings that you can do natively in Shopify to make sure that you can actually request um, a return. Um, without additional software, all from the new account structure of Shopify, which is quite exciting um, and can lead to a lot of automations, uh, automations, sorry, um, from a merchant perspective and also just creates a very good experience for the customer, which is exactly what Shopify is all about, obviously. So let's dive into it. Um, what you can do actually is you go to settings. Um, sorry, oops, I'm just gonna move myself here. You go to settings, you go to the um, account structure, then it has to be a new account structure basically. Um, and you can enable self-serve returns here. Um, so if you enable this and you're on the um, uh, yeah, account structure, the new account structure, you will actually, so if you enable this, you will basically see um, the request return button show up in your um, account structure on your orders. Um, so this is the first step, but then you have an interesting thing that is shown here, which is the return rules. So those are all the things that you can add from your admin directly um, to make sure that you can do stuff, as I said before, that some items cannot be returned. So all of the settings that you can do, uh, which are very interesting to have a look at natively, you can actually select here. So basically what you can do is you have a return window. So automatically, if an order is older than this return window, you will not be able to request a return anymore on a certain order. So again, if you have like 10 orders here and some of um, them are three months ago um, and you have in your backends that you can only allow 30 days of returns, which is something that is legally, for example, um, yeah, a legal measure in, in Belgium. So you can select the um, return window here. This is based on the policies that you have basically, right? Um, you can say that a customer um, yeah, needs to pay for their return shipping or can um, create a free return shipping label. You can also say that uh, a restocking fee needs to be applied, um, yes or no. So basically, if you then do the return, you will see that less will be refunded basically because we additionally charge a, re uh, um, a restocking fee. So imagine you've bought something of 100 euros and you request a return. Um, the refunds that will be created based on the request that the customer has to return will all only be 90 euros because you have to pay 10% of 100 euros, which is 10 euros in this case. And then you can also say that certain items are a final sale so that customers cannot return those specific products. 
you can do specific products or you can base it on a certain collection that a collection of items are never um, returnable. For example, if you have uh, products in a sale collection, um, which are end of line or you don't need to, you, you don't want to make those products anymore and they are part of, the, of that collection, you can just select this collection, which is sale and people will never be able to return um, if that product is also in that collection. So basically here you can already do quite a lot of interesting return rules so that you can create the um, experience that I showed you before. So this is request return because we enabled self-serve returns. Um, and then we can actually yeah, return the product that still um, can be returned. You can add a reason. So you see it in the back end why this person um, has returned it, which is obviously awesome if you look at your data from time to time and see what the reasons are for returns because returns are obviously very um, um, yeah, important and uh, costly for brands. Um, you can then analyze what the reasons are um, and then the restocking fee is added here. Um, and then the return label, like I said, uh, you can set this up to be free or not. Um, so if you then select a reason, you can request a return. So let's do this for a second. Um, and then a return request has been um, sent. So how does this look in the back end? Um, if we just go to the back end real quick, uh, let's see. So you can go to the orders, you can see return requests, and then you actually see the one. Um, so let's click into the order um, itself then. So it's the order 1004 because I didn't find it in the request returns, which is weird, but okay. So let's go here. Um, and you actually see here that there is a return request. Um, so we basically went through it, right? Um, and there is a return to because I have added a return request already um, before on this order, as you saw when I was showing uh, it before. Um, but this item, of the order was still able to be returned because the order was already returned. So it's R2 on this specific order. And you can actually review the request here. So as a, uh, a merchant, you see that a review request came in. Um, you can exchange uh, items here and you can, for example, add a file. So I think I have a file return label. So imagine we just add it here. Obviously this can also be added um, automatically. And then you, for example, approve it. There is a restocking fee. Um, the return is then in process. So if you then reload the order, which is now the return has been requested. So your return request has been sent and being reviewed. So if we upload now, because we reviewed it from the back end, basically, then you can see that now it's uh, in progress and you can print your shipping label and then send it back to the customer. So basically the whole flow went um, in a couple of minutes where you set it up, where you see the review uh, request reviews, uh, the return reviews uh, requests coming in. Um, you can then see from the back end if you want to allow it, yes or no, the restocking fees are added correctly. You can upload a shipping label and the customer can put the shipping label on the box and send it back um, for um, yeah, returning it basically. Um, so a lot of possibilities there. Super interesting to just have a look at um, yourself um, because yeah, this might be actually a lot of automation um, for you, um, making sure that you can handle everything from the admin in Shopify and uh, provide your customers with the right type of um, returns right out of the gate and account, account structure of Shopify itself. So if you have any questions about this, let us know, super interesting new feature. Um, so um, yeah, maybe we can implement it together for you. Um, and if you have any questions, again, let us know. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.